Hello and welcome to sunny Rochester where now it's a men's turn to take on the HSBC UK National Circuit Race Championships. The men are lining up and they are all fighting for that top position and not only that of course the chance to wear those national stripes on their kit. It's so so coveted, we'll get it underway very shortly but first let's remind ourselves of everything that happened last year in Stockton on Tees. Coming out of us for a three men wide. Pitcock up outside, but here comes Gibson up the inside. What a dacious move there by Gibson. Is he going to hang on here? Pitcock's over the back of him, but it looks like Matt Gibson from JLT Condor is going to take the national championship. A brilliant result and victory there for Matt Gibson. He's not lining up tonight, but as you can see, there's a very big field lining up behind me tonight in Rochester. So before we get to all tonight's action, let's take a closer look at this race venue. Medway City of Rochester is the home of the National Circuit Championships for 2019. The 1.6 kilometre circuit passes the monumental medieval Rochester Castle, one of the many landmarks of the city's rich historical background. Alongside Rochester Cathedral and the neighbouring Chatham Dockyard, the iconic cobbled streets were a favourite of Charles Dickens, who used the city as a heavy influence for much of his work. Medway history also stretches into the world of cycling, having previously hosted a stage at the Tour de France back in 2007, and since then the city has built up its cycling culture massively, now providing over 70 miles of on- and off-road cycling routes for everyone to enjoy. From Rochester's impressive landmarks to the iconic cobbles and vicious corners, this circuit will really put the riders to the test this weekend, and it is safe to say that we all have great expectations for this race. I'm on the line now with Matt Bostock and it's fair to say you've had so much dominance in the series coming into tonight. A lot of eyes on you, but how are you feeling? I'm excited, yeah. I'm looking forward to it and it uh, should be a good race. What do you make of this circuit? I know you've all had a little bit of a recce tonight. Um, it's, it's tight and technical. A bit, um, a bit dodgy, so I think it'll be a race from the front and most important could be the start. Okay, getting pushed out of the way a little bit here, but good luck tonight. Um, now let's head over to the commentary box of James McCallum and once again, Hannah Walker. Let's take a look at the map below the circuit because tonight's a really interesting, it's actually it's a really, really nice circuit all around Rochester, around basically the perimeter of the Rochester Castle. So we got a really, really fast home straight, tight left hand hairpin up on a nice smooth time, but there's a lot of cobbles, a lot of chains of surface, a few big speed bumps, but a really, really fast finish here, Hannah. Yeah, you go as you go uh, into the finish, finishing straight, there's a left hander, which as we saw in the women's race, it's a little bit like a 50p. It's not, you know, completely uh, left smooth turn, um, but you come off it with a lot of speed off of that downhill see the rider there <laughs> pushed his way out he's ended up getting on the nice front to row nice reverse so. himself into the front, front of the grid good good man good to see so we can just see a little bit of uh, the nerves in the front of the faces of the rider series we'll have this first lap will be neutral as always this is absolute chaos but even more so right now because in the best part of 20 meters time they're going to take a really tight left hander and this is going to become one very very thin road very very quickly yeah you don't want to uh, get you see already you see right away, yep you know, all the riders get caught up there. It goes so narrow with so many riders. You know, it's a neutral lap, which is good. So, you know, all those riders won't be affected too much. But, um, yeah, not the ideal start. And, you know, it just shows that, you know, you want to be at the front for the, the, the majority of this race, like we saw in the women's race, just ride it hard from the start. Yes, yeah, so now we look at all of the previous winners. So we, we see, the, obviously, Matt Gibson, Tom Pidcock, Chris Lawless. Neither of them are here tonight. Ian Bibby, he's here. Can Bibby turn this around? Because this is actually a course that would really, really suit Ian Bibby, and we actually didn't even think about him on our list of five people who could win this race. Yeah, and you know, Bibby uh, won in Barnsley in 2015, and it was kind of a, a circuit very similar to this, where you know there was a short, sharp climb, and uh, you know it was technical, and it so certainly suits Bibby as a, uh, a cyclocross rider. You know, he's a former cyclocross champion that you know a circuit like this really uh, plays into his hands. 
So you can see up there on the left hand side folks there are Hannah and I's picks of the ones to watch tonight. Jonathan Mould, obviously. Mouldy has been so close so many times in the National Championship. He's been the bridesmaid pretty much for, been for the last just, uh, five years. Here. You'd be really nervous tonight, but one man who should not be nervous whatsoever is the man in the centre of a picture there, just in the second line. Matt Bostock, he's got an incredibly strong team around the him as he has had all season. Canyon DHB have been, let's be honest, they've been very, very dominant across the board in the UK this year, haven't they? Yeah, uh, not just in circuit races, but also on the road. Valley Moore is setting the, uh, the pace here. Based himself in Belgium, so he, you know he's used to this uh, fast type of racing. As we have our first attack of the night, Mould comes to the front, Joey Walker in his wheel. It's more of a fight for positioning right now, isn't it? Because they know this is such an important part of this race. As we do know, in circuit races, you always have to be in the front foot. You have to speculate to accumulate, give yourself that bit of free space so you can pick your way around the course, you can see the difficulties, you can see the change of the surface. But Mould, you know what? He's lit it up straight away and followed very, very quickly there by Matt Bostock from Canyon DHB. Joey Walker, yep. one of the best and most you know, up-and-coming right racers. As he attacks up this climb down, Gab's colleague, it looks like, in his wheel, or is that Ollie yep, Moore still? it's definitely Gab's, Gab's colleague, can tell with that big muscular physique of Gab's colleague. They're going Boy, so fast around these corners, the motorbike's almost yep. not able to get out of the corners quick enough. And at this nice sweeping left-hander, but don't forget, this circuit goes from wide to narrow repeatedly. This is why you need to be on the front, this is why you have to take the advantage. And we see right there in the background, another rider having issues, having to do a quick cyclocross style bike change in that pit. Yeah, and you know, this is what it takes when you don't have laps out. You have to be good all round. You have to be able to have a bike change, but you have to be able to communicate efficiently to tell your mechanics and, and, and uh, uh, sports directors, you need a bike change, you need this. And um, you know, the quickest thing to have is a bike change as opposed to uh, you know, a wheel change or um, anything else. Good yeah, that it so happened though, going into the, the finishing straight wouldn't be very good because this is a 1.6 kilometer circuit. So if you have lip. any problems, you know, on the on the back end or, you know, even just after the finish line, you can't go back to the pitch. You have to do a full lap before you can change the bike again. And you'll, put, you'll find that the, the more established teams, they will have staff around the course with two way radios communicating to the pit, whether it's uh, John Mould needs a bike change or there's another example there, Vitas, Joe Holt Vitas Pro there. Cycling. Yep, Joe Holt's obviously had issues, but this is why they have got spare bikes now. It used to always just be wheel changes and laps out, but now since that rule changed, due to, to be all to, honest with you, just a lot of abuse of the rule, um, it's now made a more even playing field, and you see riders no longer having random issues with their bikes or randomly falling off their bikes when they're getting uh, distance in the bunch anymore. Just roll up that climb, but you see looking over his shoulder, Johnny McAvoy having a quick check down that line, Little question to his teammate, do we keep on pressing on? And I think the answer was yes. Yeah. Oh, have we seen another ah, crash here? Is this Sheriff Sheriff here? Crashed on this corner. We've seen a few uh, close misses and a few crashes in the women's race. Mundy's but keeping this going though, Hannah. He's, he's booming with confidence. He just recently had a really good result at the Beaumont Trophy, one of the rounds of the National Road Series. The motorbike. And he's got daylight between himself and the bunch. So. This is a good, good move as Free Sheriff's just taken that corner just a little bit too quick. But we did notice in the women's race that there had been a bit of sand placed on that corner, probably due to it being a city centre and potentially being some oil on the circuit. Yeah, we saw the uh, the marshals just sweeping it off after about halfway in the women's race, so they realised that the, the corner was really playing havoc with the, with the riders. Monday doing a superb job here, opening up that gap. Johnny McAvoy, you know, looked behind him, asked. His, uh, his team, Joey Walker and John Mould, should I, you know, should I ride full gas? And they said yes, but he's not been able to close this gap to Isaac Mundy. Maybe, you know, we've, we've still got 36 minutes remaining and the five laps, maybe, you know, they're quite happy to let him, let him out there a let little him dangle. bit. Let yep. him dangle. Mundy, obviously moving now to a, a slightly smaller team, having previously ridden for a few of the pro teams in the UK, he is not a rider you want to disappear, as you can see. Very, very able to throw that bike around all of these corners. But right now, he's got a good bit of distance between himself and the bunch. On a circle like this, this is not such a big problem for a rider on their own, is it? Yeah, it is perfect. We know, as we saw before in the women's race, he's telling the motorbike to get out of the way, get out of his... Uh, you know, so he can take this bend you know, at full pelt because he's got Canyon DHB chasing him there with, looks Alex like, Alex Richardson, Richardson on the front. Um, and he wants to be able to take the corner with, you know, at full speed, carry the speed into the corner because it's a steep uphill. Here ABC. we go now. This is Isaac Mundy's going to be caught. Looks like Joey Walker. Yep, that's a big, big move coming across. I think Monday was waiting for that. And I think, to be honest with you, he'll be relieved that he's got a bit of company around this circuit now. But this now puts Ev, these two riders on the front foot. Now it looks to have to be down to the combination of Vitas Pro Cycling as well as Canyon DHB to come across this gap. But that's been some effort to get across that because just one lap ago, 
the gap was almost the distance of the whole of the home straight, which is give or take 20 to 25 seconds. So that's some effort by Walker. Yeah, incredible effort by Walker. Um, you know, he's been looking good in all these crits throughout the throughout the summer. But what an effort. I mean, yeah, you know, all it would take is Mundy to just lose a few seconds on the lap. The gap was only 10 seconds. So if he lost, you know, two seconds, uh, Walker only has to close, you know, an eight second gap. And he's made it across this this forcing now canyon dhb to to chase ollie woods trying his best to go on the front as we start to see little gaps appearing again in that bunch as matt bostock was just at the back of that little split in the front of the bunch the thing is here again it's only one rider going to the front and one rider is good to have to represent but they need more numbers at the front of that bunch to pull this gap back yeah and you know you see roger hammond in the uh, in the pits there on the left he's saying you know this is this is the situation on the road giving him signals just hand signals because you can't really hear the the sports directors shouting to you there's so many crowds here in rochester that you know the noise is is almost deafening especially going up that climb first and foremost monday was on his own the right at the front in the orange with the white helmet from richardson trek he was on his own for the best part of the first 10 minutes he had roughly a 15 second gap but then, like a bullet out of a gun, Joey Walker came straight across there and no one even had a chance to come with him. So, for my money, that's exactly the moment when the tactics have went backwards for Canyon DHB and Vitas Pro Cycling. They should have had someone on the back of that. More importantly, should have someone on the back of Joey Walker because he's in some good form right now. Yeah, definitely. Joey's in, uh, in great form. But, um, you know, they should have really uh, been aware that Madison were going to throw another rider to jump across to Isaac Mundy. Um, you know, Johnny McAvoy originally was chasing, but they probably, you know, reassessed and thought it's better for us to send a rider across and, you know, leave it to Canyon and Vitas to, to Absolutely. Uh, chase. Yep. You know, they've still got around 20 minutes of racing left. They just need to keep their heads down um, and, and keep working well together as they have been doing for the past, you know, half an hour. This actually is a very interesting duel, to be honest with you, because Monday is not slow. He is a quick sprinter, as is Joey Walker. So they're very, very evenly matched in my book. Hand, bike handling skills very very similar physically also very similar so it could be a really interesting last few laps if these guys succeed in staying away but it'll be interesting to see how they try and play each other Five laps to go, folks. So now we are in that point we've been speaking about for the last few minutes. Now the psychology and the tactics start taking place. As you see, the bunch now are now on the same street, but I'm telling you what, Hannah, they're going to have to do something really special. As you see the rider at the back there, another one of Isaac Mundy's teammates just tagging on the back. They've got really good representation in this group. They've got two riders chasing. This. We've now got 18 second gap now to these two riders at the front. But again, Ollie Wood still on the front. Ryder getting a free ride here right now is Gabs Kulig sitting in third place. He's hardly touched the win tonight. Super fast in a sprint, Gabs. Fearless. He could be a man for a last minute attack and potentially get across to these two. Yeah, I mean, we saw how strong he was at Colm Grand Prix on Tuesday night. You know, he was attacking constantly. Um, so, yeah, definitely could come and attack in the final, uh, final laps. Take everyone by surprise. You know, he is fresh. Um, but he has got to close a 19 second gap to our two leaders, Walker and Monday. It's, despite all the work Ollie Wood has done this race, it's not, unfortunately, he's not been able to decrease it. But now we're getting to this real difficult part now, Hannah, where we can just see up ahead of us, three laps to go. Next time round it's two and we've got riders still on the course. We need to make sure the commentators clear that pathway so that nothing untoward happens to these two riders because right now they don't deserve to have anything out of their control contributing to the result of this race. No, and... Uh you're quite right, you know, they want to have a clear run to the finish, nothing in the way to uh, disrupt the race or to, you know, to even um, make the time come d time gap come down to the chasers, so they want to have a clear run, and I think uh, next time they will be red flagged and pulled out by the commissaires. Exactly, so now it's also going to get very, very tactical. You can now see there's a little bit of um, poker becoming more and more evident every lap round here as they're going to be sliding round after this with two laps to go and it's going to get really really interesting because as we said so many times that's great sportsmanship getting out of the way letting the race go and you can see a little bit of encouragement there to Isaac Monday from his teammate just giving him a little g up and i tell you what his confidence is going to be overflowing and if he can pull away this this evening with that national championship jersey his confidence is going to go through the roof now yes. wouldn't be surprised to see him back up at the top at uk racing yeah certainly will um but you know the thing is coming into these last few laps how can he deal with the pressure being in the situation you know joey walker's been in a situation before where you know he knows how to win he's won before and he can deal with that pressure you know 
will Isaac Mundy, you know, kind of deal with it well? How is he going to be able to, you know, take these corners? He's still taking these corners full pelt. Yeah. Um, Joey Walker definitely taking it a little bit more gingerly. And here we go. Two laps to go, Hannah. Just over three kilometres of racing on this 1.6 kilometre loop. It's getting to that point now. All the information is coming from that pit. These guys are installed into them now. Two laps to go. I cannot see this coming back, but this is going to be a brilliant finish. This is Hannah. I'm really, really hoping for a, a proper race to the end. Lots of attacking. But I tell you what, who's going to be the first one to go? It's all about the confidence as well. Who's the most confident to attack? You know, does Walker feel like he's got it in him to uh, to be able to attack him and win and shake uh, Isaac Mundy off, or is he confident that he can win the sprint? You know, Mundy taking these corners superbly and definitely faster than uh, Walker after Walker's near off. Um, but Walker just forces Mundy to come through now. Yep, they're just trying to see if they can spot any little chinks in the armour, any little bits of weakness, whether it's uh, a, an ability to take a corner or just a little change in the gearing, just waiting to have that moment to pounce. And you know what? It's basically now all about these two guys. The gap now is 26 seconds, so these boys are not coming back unless they do an awful lot of messing around. As we see now, Joey Walker just trying Shaking to get a little legs. bit of life into those legs. A little bit of a psychological trick on yourself just to loosen yourself up and get yourself ready. In a similar way that you see boxers getting their smelling salts, that's exactly the cycling equivalent. <laughs> I think as well, you know, Joey, if he plays this smart, he can actually force Isaac Mundy to sort of ride on the front for the majority of the rest of this race now, actually. Um, they've got almost enough time to look at each other and mess around, but they, they need know to be they, really they be careful, cagey. really careful. Can't be any more than just over two and a half k's left of this race now, but we know the gap is still in the best part of 20 to 30 seconds, so it's all down to these two boys. They need to keep riding at least for another lap together, or else it's all over. They cannot mess around, and it's going to come down to a really interesting finish between these two lads. But what are we going to see from the chasing group behind? Are we going to see anyone uh, launch an attack off the front? Joe Walker just takes the uh, the corner towards the castle now in Rochester as he takes the tight left and then right hander is before he goes downhill and takes a left hander into the finishing straight where he'll hear the bell with one lap to go wouldn't be surprised when we hit the bell this time there's a lot of finessing down this home straight a lot of zigzagging across the road just to have a little look over the shoulder check the gap as a last psychological check to just know that they've got enough time they'll know how much they can wiggle how much wiggle room they've got between now and the finish with that bunch bearing down on them. But I tell you what, back in the bunch, the same thing's happening. Guys are going to start looking at each other. Matt Bostock is going to have to make a move pretty soon if he wants to get across to this. But you know what? I think it's over and done for those guys in the chasing group. All looking at each other, being roared on by, you know, a huge crowd here in Rochester. Brilliant to see, but, you know, as they go, take this climb for the last time. They can look left and see if they can see that bunch chasing down on them. They don't see them. Mundy really puts the pressure onto Joey. Joey's just looking at him, staying on his back wheel. As we see now, an attack from Vetus Pro Cycling. Bibby like Adam, follows. Adam Kennaway quickly followed there by former national champion Ian Bibby there from Madison Genesis. Quickly then followed by Gab's colleague from Wiggins Lacall. These two riders still look they're sharing the work though, Hannah. This is quite good right now because they need to make sure they don't mess about. Just need to keep pushing on for at least another two or three hundred metres and then they can start looking at each other. Get in that faster part of the course get around this corner, on that downhill, and then they can start really thinking about how they're going to win this bike race. In the last half a lap, they've lost four seconds. They still lead by 22 seconds to that chasing group. How much has Adam Kenway from Vetus Pro Cycling got? Can he jump across to them? Can he outfox them? You know, if they start looking at each other, Monday takes a look behind. Yep, Joey Walker isn't willing to come through now. So it begins now, 22 seconds they still currently have, but you know what, folks? This can disappear in a blink of an eye. One lap to go. Who is going to win this HSBC UK British Cycling National Circuit Race Championship? The pressure, I think, from Mad Money is on the shoulders of Joey Walker. Yeah, definitely. You know, Joey's had uh, some great results recently and uh, been riding very, very strong. Great teammate to the Madison uh, Genesis team. We saw him do a great lead out on uh, Tuesday night at Cong Grand Prix, but it definitely pressures on him to take the victory tonight. Yeah, we'll Being to on one of the biggest, uh, biggest UK teams. And we're getting to this point again where we know this is the only place really in the last 500 meters you can really move up so it's all about who's into this next corner 
Can they hold the speed as we see Isaac Monday lights it up first. Walker quickly on the back from Monday has been really careful and protect his line here. Does what Walker come up the inside? This is where it's going to matter. If Joey wants to win this title, he really needs to start getting to first wheel. Where is he going to be able to move up before he gets to this left right-hander and then left-hander? You go around this right-hander, quick left, really, really tight part of the circuit. A little stabby, little climb here as Monday got the strength to take this all the way to the line, but Walker's on the back of him. This is all about who wants this the most. Monday has still got a bit of daylight between himself and Joey Walker. And you know what? It looks like he's going to hang on to this, Hannah, as we now take the final corner. Monday in the lead. Monday on the gas, but he has a slight slip of the wheel. Isaac Monday on the front from Richardson Trick, quickly followed by... Oh, Monday takes his foot out of the peril! Ah, oh, that Heart is for devastating for Isaac Monday. Joey Walker takes the national championship and there in third place. Looks like Gabs Kool-Aid's going to go shoulder to shoulder with Matt Bostock. Looks like Bostock's going to take the bronze medal. What a finish, Hannah. I feel devastated for Isaac Monday. Absolute heartbreak. I can't believe the... Nearly had enough on that last corner on the left-hander and then he corrected himself, thought he had it and then pulled his foot out and Joey Walker was able to come round and, and snatch it from him. Absolute heartbreak, but great ride by Joey. I just didn't expect to come in. I didn't have great legs on the night, so I thought I'll attack across to Isaac and hope for the best. And to be fair, he was really strong. He had a bit of battle lung there, but it's bike racing and yeah, super happy. At what point did you allow yourself to think, okay, this is it, this is sticking? <sighs> about 10 minutes to go but then like I said the gap started coming down again and I don't know whether I was seeing things but I thought I saw them coming and oh we hung on so yeah it was good and there's your top 10 folks Joey Walker Madison Genesis takes the stripy jersey and the gold medal ahead of Isaac Mundy from Richardson Trek followed by the man who's currently on form Matt Bostock And a very happy Joey Walker pops the cork on that champagne. What a superb moment for him and a brilliant ride out there tonight. That's all we've got time for here at the National Champs here in Rochester. Two very deserving brand new National Circuit Champions crowned. Um, if you've missed any of this year's season of circuit racing, don't forget you can catch up with everything over on the British Cycling YouTube and everything from the world of cycling is always over on britishcycling.org.uk. From all of us here in Rochester, bye-bye. We'll see you next year.